Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the fighter weapons teams of the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, High Target. This is the story of Staff Sergeant Ted Edgerton, his girl Mary, and how the teamwork displayed at the fighter weapons meet affected their lives. Our first act curtain will rise in a moment, but first, announcing new opportunities for former servicemen in the Air Force. If you're a veteran of any service and are seriously interested in a brighter future, you should take a close look at the Air Force Prior Service Program. You'll find that your skills and experience acquired in the armed forces can bring immediate rewards in the Air Force. If you qualify in one of many needed categories, you can enlist in an appropriate grade immediately and enjoy a 30-day paid delay in reporting if requested. And if you don't have a currently usable skill, you can take an aptitude test before enlisting, which, if you qualify, will guarantee the finest technical training. Today's airmen receive generous pay raises, increased bonuses and allowances, and extended retirement benefits. This is just part of the picture. See your local Air Force recruiter for all the facts. There's no obligation. Find out why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, High Target. There was plenty of excitement in the air at Selfridge Air Force Base. Today, the names of the maintenance crew for the Eastern Air Defense Force rocketry team were posted. My name was there, Staff Sergeant Ted Edgerton and my pal, Tech Sergeant Wendy Walsh, and about 40 other guys. This wasn't exactly new stuff for some of us. Our team had won the 30th Air Division meet in May, and a month later, the 30th and 37th Divisional shoot-off. But this was real big time. This was the worldwide rocketry meet at Vincent Air Force Base in Arizona. Well, Wendy and I acted like a couple of kids when we got the news. Hey, fella, we made it, we made it. We're going to Yuma, to Mexico, maybe to Las Vegas. We're going to see the world, eat tamales, dance the fandango. We're that going to Vincent with the greatest team <laughs> in the world. We're going to win the meet. Naturally. Oh, those desert sands, that desert sunshine, and how I love to travel. Has anybody told you they're taking us along to keep the planes in the air, Wendy? We'll be handling things like fuel, oxygen, repairs? Sure, sure, that part I like, too. I've always wanted to go to a World Series, and this is the first time I ever made it. World Series? Sure, Ted, the World Series of the Air. The sharp shootingest pilots, the fastest planes, the keenest competition, the best in the world at the biggest meet. Yep, and Eastern Air Defense Force is going to win it. Well, Wendy and I calmed down a little after a while. But from that time on, every time I thought about it, which was pretty often, I got that same feeling of excitement and pride. I, I couldn't wait to write and tell my girl Mary about it. Of course, I didn't expect that she would really understand... Mary was waiting for me to leave all this, to come home when my term of enlistment ended in a couple of months, open a garage, get married, settle down. But, but I, I couldn't help some of the excitement getting into my letter. Hey, Ted, I... Oh, excuse me, you were writing to your girl? I was. Telling her the news about our going to the meet? I mentioned it. But I don't think Mary would understand what it's all about. Well, she's not stupid, is she? Well, certainly not. She's smart, sweet. Okay, then I think you ought to let her know what you're giving up for her. What I'm giving up? I'm not giving up anything. Well, you're getting out of the Air Force, aren't you? You're going to settle down when you could be seeing the world, learning something new every day, when you could be in on the big things, the new adventures. And all because you're afraid to tell your girl that you want to stay in the Air Force. Look, Wendy, will you kindly get out and let me write to my girl? Okay, okay, I'll go, if I've said too much. You have. All right, I I'm a clam from now on. <laughs> Crazy fool. Where was I? And, Mary, today, one of the greatest things happened to me that's happened in my whole life outside of knowing you. I'm, I'm maintenance crew chief, chief for, for the Eastern Air Defense, Defense Forces rocketry team, team that's going, going to the, the weapons, weapons meet out in Yuma, Arizona. We've got the greatest team in the world, Mary. Captain Morena, captain of the team, is the greatest pilot and the greatest guy. 
He's got skill and nerve and courage. You never saw such fellows. Hmm. Greatest team, greatest pilot, greatest guy. Mother? Mother? Yes, Mary? Look, this letter from Ted, he sounds just crazy about the Air Force. He's always said he liked it, liked working on those jet planes. I know, I know, but th this is different. I thought we were both counting the months till he got out and we were going to be married. <laughs> now I wonder. Wonder what, dear? Well, I wonder if he really wants to leave the Air Force. Listen, listen to this. We're the Eastern Air Defense Team. Do you know what that means, Mary? It means we're all part of a team that works day and night to defend the ones we love. In the meet, our boys will be flying fighter interceptor planes, shooting at a target about the size of an enemy bomber, trying to perfect themselves in case they meet a real enemy and not just some nylon target. Well, you see, he never wrote to me like that before. Well, maybe he thought you wouldn't be interested. But I am interested. In fact, I want to know more. I want to know what he really thinks. Mother, how far is it to Yuma, Arizona? Oh, goodness, Mary, I don't know. Why don't you look it up on the map? Well, I could call the airport. Mother, do you think it's too far for me to go and find out for myself? I think it might be a very good trip for you to take, Mary. Hey, look down there, Ted. What a view. It looks like some giant took a big brush and... and... Hey, hey, that's it. Yeah. That must be the painted desert that I've heard so much about. Not a camel in sight. Well, you couldn't see a camel from 10,000 feet up, Windy. Oh, you don't know me. I got 20-20 vision. <laughs> oh, this sure is pretty country. I don't know why I wasn't born a western cowboy instead of a Michigan Avenue. Yeah, I can see you in a cowboy hat. And that's just what I'm going to buy when I get to Mexico. And one of those cowboy shirts. <laughs> Souvenirs, that's for me. You're not thinking of a trip to Mexico before the meet. Well, sure, tonight. We've got a lot of responsibility, Wendy. Ted, that starts tomorrow. Hey, hey, fellas, word just came through. We're all invited to a big barbecue tonight. A barbecue? Where, where? On the base. All the food you can eat, Mexican music, and pretty girls to dance with. Oh, talk about hospitality. Everybody's invited. Hey, listen, you guys, I've got some news for you. Yeah, now, what do you think of that, Ted? Even before we land, they're throwing a party for us, and uh, I accept. And what about your trip to Mexico? Oh, that can wait. Tonight, I settle for barbecued beef and tamale pie with a little Mexican music thrown in. Hey, this is a real great party. Did you ever see so much food in your life? Joe, they tell me there's 1,200 pounds of beef and a half a ton of potato salad. Maybe there was before we started in on it. Yeah. Hey, hey, where's Ted? Ah, he said something about uh, owning his girl. Oh, that's so. Yes, operator, I said Lisbon, Vermont. Yeah, uh, that number is 15 ring 3. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Peterson. This is Ted. Oh, Ted, how are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, may I speak to Mary, please? Uh, Mary isn't home, Ted. Oh, oh, then I'll, I'll call later. When do you expect her? I don't expect her. Uh, not soon, that is. Oh, well, if you'll tell me where she is, maybe I could call her there. I really don't know where she is, Ted. Well, Mary's all right, isn't she, Mrs. Peterson? Oh, yes. Now, don't you worry, Ted. Mary's just fine. You'll hear from her. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wait. Wow. Any uh, girls to jump, Chum? No, uh... No, her mother, her mother, I, I don't Nobody get it. ever understands a prospective mother-in-law, or so they tell me. Come on, Ted, come on back to the barbecue. The party's just getting good. No, I think I'll turn in, Wendy. Now, look, fella, don't let a little thing like a girl's mother get you down. No, nobody's got me down. I just feel like turning in. We're likely to have a big day tomorrow. And we'll be ready for it. Well, okay. Okay, have it your way. I'll see you at dawn. <laughs> I really was kind of upset about Mary, but I tried to tell myself it was just the way her mother sounded on the phone. Anyhow, I had other things to think about. The meet began the next day, and I wanted to be out on the flight line early. As it turned out, everybody else was there early, including Wendy. We were all kind of nervous, keyed up, raring to go. Good morning, Sergeant Edgerton. Morning, Sergeant Walsh. Oh, what a day for the meet. Sunshine, blue skies. It looks so clear you ought to be able to see what'll be going on up there instead of having to watch a radar scope or listen to the radio. We welcome you to the USAF fighter weapons meet, and particularly to the rocketry competition here at Vincent Air Force Base. 
Nineteens will participate in the fighter interceptor phase. Teams representing the three air defense forces in the Air Defense Command. Eastern Air Defense, Central Air Defense, and Western Air Defense. And the six other major USAF commands. Here comes Captain Morena. He's scheduled for the first sortie for Eastern Air Defense. Morning, Sergeant. Morning, sir. It's like a great day. Yes, sir. It's going to be a great day for us. Are you a prophet? Don't see how we can miss. Our team's the tops. Yes, sir. I second that. Uh, you all set, sir? Yeah, okay. The ship looks raring to go this morning. She is, sir. This is the day you make a perfect score, Captain. Well, I'll be up there trying. There will be three levels of firing. 9,000, 20,000, and 35,000 feet. Each pilot will fly six missions at the three different altitudes. Captain Morena of the Eastern Air Defense Team will make the first sortie at 9,000 feet. Our first man, captain of the Eastern Air Defense Team, was on his way. The worldwide rocketry meet had begun. We were listening on the radio with all ears when we got trouble. The starter generator on Lieutenant Stanley's plane, scheduled for a 9-10 takeoff, conked out. This meant removing the aft section and rolling back the engine to replace the starter. This kind of job usually takes seven or eight hours. Ah, we got real trouble here, Sergeant. We got no alternate plane for Lieutenant Stanley. By the time we get this job done, it'll be too late for today's competition. Who said that? Winning or losing the meet may depend on getting this plane in the air. Let's get at it. Okay. All right, come on, fellas. You heard what the man said. Yeah, and the man's right. The enemy's breathing right down our neck, so let's get going. <laughs> There she goes. Good luck up there, Lieutenant Stanley. <laughs> I never would have thought we could have done it. Oh, I felt as if I had six pairs of hands and feet. Well, how long did it take us to do that job, Ted? Well, let me see. Three hours and 18 minutes. Ooh, I hope nobody tells the general. He might expect us to carry on like that every day. Yeah, that was a good job, Sergeant. Thank you, Captain. The only thing, we were too busy to listen to what you were doing. But we heard you had a hit. Well, it's a probable. The judges are checking. Well, they'll find out it's a bullseye. Oh, I'd like to be a judge up there on that chase plane taking pictures of the hits. Then I could really see what's going on. Lieutenant Stanley of the Eastern Air Defense Team in his second sortie at 12,000 feet. Well, if Lieutenant Stanley gets a hit, that'll tie us with Far East Air Force. If Lieutenant Stanley gets a hit, you boys can count it a hit for the maintenance crew. A pilot can't score unless he gets a chance to shoot. He's on the target. Rockets away. It looks as if Lieutenant Stanley has a probable hit. That ties us with the Far East Air Force. Well, what did I tell you? We got the best sharpshooters in the meet. We've got the best maintenance crew in the meet. More trouble over here, Ted. Something wrong with Lieutenant Jones' plane? Something wrong with the afterburner. Oh, looks like we gotta got to have a new one. A new afterburner? Well, how much time we got, Captain? Lieutenant Jones is due for another sortie this afternoon. Ouch. Well, we can do it. Give us three hours. Three hours? Look, Ted, what do you think we are, Superman? Maybe not. But we've got to act like we are. We did it. We got Lieutenant Jones' plane back in the air in two hours and a half. They told us it was some kind of a wreck. We all felt bushed at the end of the day, but excited and happy, too. Eastern Air Defense was tied with Far East Air Force for first place. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, High Target. We'll return for the second act, in just a moment. Are you a service veteran? Then listen carefully. This message is for you. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grade that will surprise you. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put your skill to work and at a higher grade and higher pay than you may realize. The Air Force needs experience and know-how gained in all the armed forces. And now, thanks to the new Career Incentive Act, you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage by returning to the armed forces as a member of the Air Force team. Write or visit your Air Force recruiter for the special prior serviceman's folder. It's full of important details. You'll see why today and tomorrow you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now we present the second act of High Target. At the end of the third day, our Eastern Air Defense Team was still tied for first place with Far East Air Forces. But the Western Air Defense Team was creeping up on us. I was heart and soul for winning, but back in one corner of my mind was this nagging worry about Mary. There was still no word from her. So that evening, I made another try at getting her on the phone. 
once again, I got her mother. Hello. Hello? This is Ted, Mrs. Peterson. Oh, yes, Ted. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. How's Mary? Is she there? Uh, no, she's not here, Ted. Well, well, where is she? How could I reach her? Tell me, what's going on, Mrs. Peterson? I haven't heard from Mary. I, I can't get her on the phone. Maybe you're not calling the right number, Ted. What? What's that? Have you tried calling the hotel in Yuma? Yuma? Yuma, Arizona? That's right. Well, what would I be calling Yuma for? I, I want to talk to Mary, your daughter Mary. I know. Well, that's the best place I know to find her. Goodbye, Ted. Operator. Operator, wake up, will you? Operator, uh, get, me, get me the hotel in Yuma. Which hotel? I, I don't know the names of the hotels, any hotel. Well, all of them, one at a time, till I get the right one. Yes, and will you hurry up, please? Okay, I've got change. Hello? Mary? Is this Mary? Mary Peterson? Yes, Ted. Is it really you? Of course it is. Well, what on earth are you doing out here? When did you come? Last night. Last night? Why, why didn't you let me know? What happened? Well, it was kind of sudden. I guess I just felt I needed a vacation, and, well, I wanted to see you. Well, I want to see you, Mary, but of all the surprises, I... I don't get it. You sure picked a crazy time to drop in on me, honey. I'm tied up with the meat all day and half the night. I know. What about tonight? Oh, tonight's good. I'll get a pass and come and pick you up right away. Well, I could come out there right now. There's a cab in front of the hotel. Well, it would save time if you don't mind. Where do I meet you? I'll be waiting at the gate. Hurry, will you? Okay. Bye. Mary. Oh, gosh, it really is you. Hey, Ted, you, you kiss me like that with people around? Oh, who cares about people? They're not bothering with us. Oh, you're the prettiest I ever saw, honey. <laughs> and the sweetest. Oh, I love you. I love you, too, Ted. I still can't believe you're here. Well, you've never been farther away from home than Albany. And to come alone. Mm. Oh, well, when I look at you, I stop trying to figure out anything. Uh, Ted, don't you think maybe we ought to go someplace where we can talk? Yeah, sure, we can go to the NCO club. Or, or we can we can take a walk. All right, let, let's just walk. You're sure you're not going to vanish if I shut my eyes? I promise to stay till the meet's over. That's not going to give us an awful lot of time together, honey. I'm busy all day. I might have to work late at night if there's a big repair job on a plane. You see, the flyboys are putting these jets through some terrific tests up there, and there's bound to be a lot of work to be done to keep them flying. I understand that. Uh, could I watch the meet? Oh, well, sh well, sure, that could be arranged, but... Well, that's another thing. You'll have to watch it on a radar scope, and that might not be very exciting. Why is that? Well, you can't see it from the ground. The competition takes place from three different altitude levels. Well, what actually happens to you? Well, well, let's say Captain Morena is flying his F-86D. That's a saber jet. That's right. Well, Captain Morena is flying at the 35,000-foot level. The ground controller directs him to the target. Mm -hmm. So he's closing in at 300 miles an hour on the target, towed some... 5,000 feet behind a Martin B-57. Mm -hmm. Go on. Well, the target is a nylon rag, nine by 45 feet, roughly the dimensions of an enemy heavy bomber. The jet's carrying 24 rockets, the mighty mouse. A hit on the target on his first try means scoring 1,000 points. Mm -hmm. so on the second try, 800 points. On the third try, 600 points. Well, you hear a radio squawking dialogue between the controller on the ground and Captain Morena, the pilot, high over the range. And then uh, suddenly, the captain squawks, Judy. Judy? Yeah, that means the interceptor is locked on the target. And then 45 seconds and 20 seconds, rockets away. Captain Morena scores a probable hit. Oh, I knew he would. You're kidding. No, I'm not. I'm serious. Then what happens? Well, then a judge flying in a chase plane takes a picture of the target, and he declares later whether or not the hit is official. Oh, it'll be a hit if it's Captain Morena. He's the high scorer of the meet. Well, he sure is. Well, how do you know? I read all about it in the Yuma paper while I was waiting for you to decide to phone me. Oh, if I'd only known you were here, I wouldn't have wasted a minute. Oh, golly, honey, I missed you. Oh, I wish you could be with me all the time. But in two more months... Yep, two more months. In two more months, what? I'll be out of the Air Force. Home again. Setting up a little garage. Yeah. Um, won't it seem awfully quiet after all this? Maybe you won't like it. 
Well, what makes you say that? Oh, I was just thinking. You're not going to change your mind about marrying me, oh, are you, Mary? No, that's one thing I'll never do. All right. Don't you go thinking about anything. Just you remember I love you. You hear? I'll remember. Having Mary close by made everything complete. I had my girl. My team was doing all right. And what more could I ask? I was out on the flight line earlier than usual the next morning. Only two more days to go. Nothing had better go wrong. Our crew was busy making last-minute repairs and checks to ensure peak performance. Lieutenant Harris flew the first sortie. He had a probable hit on his third try. Good enough to keep even with the Far East Air Forces. But we had a win. Captain Morena was next. Everybody who could gathered around the scoreboard or the radio. The pace setting Captain Morena of the Eastern Air Defense Team. Flying the F-86D. Oh, I feel as nervous as the guys on the bench at the Rose Bowl game. Afraid you're going to be asked to go in the last quarter, Wendy? <laughs> Listen, I tell you, Ted, it isn't funny. This competition has got my stomach so... Captain Morena flying this sortie at 35,000 feet. Oh, I wish I was up there. Anywhere but here. It makes me so nervous not being able to Shut sing. up, Wendy. Don't overdo it. Yeah. Captain, you are now directly in line with a tow target. Judy. Rockets away. Well, is it a hit? Is it? Is it? Come on. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Captain Morena. Captain, are you in trouble? What's that? What did he say? Something wrong? Explosion. I'm coming down. Going to land. What happened? He fired the rockets, didn't he? He's coming down. There must be something wrong with the plane. What was that about an explosion? Oh, he'll make it all right. He's got it. He'll make it. Yeah, here he comes now. And there goes the ambulance and the crash wagon. Ah, plane's not on fire. He'll be all right. He was down, safe. Yes, sir, Captain Morena landed, as they say, without incident. What had happened, a defective fuse had exploded a rocket prematurely, and pieces of the broken rocket had entered the engine, damaging parts of the delicate mechanism. But the important thing, the captain was safe. Oh, we sure are glad you're okay, Captain. I kept thinking if we'd left anything undone, no, no, no. I... No, it was one of those things that might have happened to anybody. It looks pretty rough, though, for the team, the plane. Yeah, that's right. We've got no substitute aircraft. It looks downright desperate. What do you say, Sergeant? How long have we got to do a repair job, Captain? Till this time tomorrow. Maybe a little longer. Okay, sir. We'll have it ready for you. But, Ted... I believe you will, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I guess that's right. If you can bring her down the way you just did, Captain, we ought to be able to get her up for you. Well, this was probably the biggest job we'd ever had to do in a limited period of time. It meant major repairs. Replacing the engine, rebuilding the rocket pod. I put two-thirds of the crew on it. We worked straight through that day and all night. I never did get word to Mary. I thought of her a few times, but I wasn't sure just where she would be, and I couldn't stop to find out. When you're working on a jet engine and your team is tied for first place and the whole outcome of the meet depends on this one engine, you keep your mind on your job till it's finished. And we finished in time. We were ready to hand over the jet to Captain Morena for a takeoff in 32 hours. Well, if you fellas had any doubts before, you know now who's flying these planes, who's on this team. You're a lot of tired-out guys, I know. But this means everything to Eastern Air Defense. What a job you've done. And we're still crowding first place, Captain. You go on up there and knock them cold. That's just what I'm aiming at, Sergeant. And that's what he did. Captain Morena had a perfect score that day. He was high scorer for the meet. I guess we found out what makes a pilot a fighter pilot. It's wanting to win. We found out a few other things, too. One, that we were in a special league, a tough league, and we were part of a pretty swell team. Well, Eastern Air Defense Force won the rocketry championship, and the cheers of her crew were still echoing over the desert when I went looking for Mary. I found her waiting for me at the NCO club. I thought you'd be pretty tired and it'd be easier for you than coming into town. And anyway, I wanted to be out here where the air is so full of excitement. Oh, gee, I'm sorry I had to wait so long, Mary. Look, I've been waiting for you for two years now. I expect to be doing it for a long, long time. And you're not sore at me for standing you up last night? Standing me up? You were doing a terrific job. I heard all about it. Who told you? Captain Morena. He found out I was here waiting for you, and he took the time to look me up and explain about everything. Oh, that was darn nice of him. Mm, wasn't it? I know they said he wasn't hurt when that rocket exploded yesterday, but I was glad to find out for myself that he really was all right. Well, what else did Captain Morena say to you? Well, for one thing, he said... You were his friend. He did? Mm-hmm. He said you'd better be friends because his very life depends on you. That was a pretty fine thing to hear, you know? 
Ted. Yeah? I'm just beginning to understand a little about the Air Force and what it must mean to you. You don't want to give it up, do you? Well, I couldn't ask you to... You couldn't ask me to be a part of it? Oh, please do. You wouldn't mind being an Air Force wife? Traveling around the world? Meeting interesting people, sharing your life while you did a job for your country and for us? Oh, please ask me, Ted. Say, you former servicemen, have you heard about the deal you can now get in the United States Air Force? Well, if you're skilled in a needed job, you're in Clover. Choice assignments are available in the United States and overseas. Or if an aptitude test shows you could do a needed job, the Air Force will guarantee you technical training and make this guarantee before you enlist. Also, there's a paid 30-day delay in reporting if requested. And listen to this. Today, the Air Force will pay you more. Reenlistment bonuses are also bigger than ever before. You'll enjoy job security, a guaranteed annual wage, and 30 days paid vacation. So don't miss these big benefits. If you're a veteran of any service, call or visit your local Air Force recruiter right away. Ask to see the new personalized prior service booklet. Yes, today and tomorrow, you are better off in the United States Air Force. has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented, transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>